In order for us to receive and to be able to receive what the Lord has for us, we have to make sure that we're prepared to receive. God doesn't want to bless you when you're in the middle of a curse. There was a family that called me one time and asked for prayer. They said, we don't know what's going on. We've seen the blessings of God, but for some reason, as we're about to receive the blessing, something happens. And we end up getting a curse, so we end up losing. We're just about to receive the, a raise. We're about to receive, and then suddenly the boss lets us go. We're about to enter into a new contract, and suddenly it just doesn't happen. It's like, it's like running a race, and right before uh, you hit the finish line, you can see it in your sight, and suddenly you trip, you fall, and you don't finish the race. I said, I don't know what it is. Can you come to the house, and can you pray for us? So I went over to the house. As I walked into the home, I began to feel that there was a wonderful presence in the house. You could tell that they prayed. You could tell that they loved God. They had the Bible open in their front entryway. You could see where they worship God. They had their Bible right next to the, the lamp table there in the, in the living room. And I said, Lord, I just, I just start praying over this home. And I began to pray. And, and, and then suddenly the Spirit of God told me that there's, that there's an unleaven. Unleaven means a, a, a sinful nature. There's, a, there's something in the house. And, and I said, what is this? And, and I just started praying in the Holy Ghost. I said, Lord, guide me to where it is. And as the Lord guided me, showed me this room. And in the room, they had this, uh, they had this little bar area with some liquor. And I looked at it and I... I just looked at it and I said, is this honoring God? And they said, well, pastor, you know, I do it for stress or I do it for heart condition, whatever excuse that they gave me. I, I just do it for this, I do it for that. And I said, well, I think God's asking you to give this to him. See, sometimes people get so caught up on what is right and wrong. We got to recognize if we obey God, God says there's things that he wants us to give up for him. There's things that my wife has required of me to give up. You know, I, I can't go play golf every week because she wants to spend time with me. Is that, is that a bad thing? That's not a bad thing. You know, there's sometimes she tells me, I, I, would, I would rather you not eat all that candy. So I have to give that up for my wife. And, I've, and if I do those things for my wife, why wouldn't I do some things for my Lord? Instead of questioning and debating whether right or wrong, when the Lord convicts you, why not just do it for God? And I said, I believe God wants you to give this up to him. I think he wants to take you to another level. I'm not going to tell you whether it's right or wrong. I'm going to let you hear the Holy Ghost. I'm going to let you read the word. I mean, I know what the word says. But it's a whole lot easier letting the Lord convict a person than I try to condemn the person. Isn't that right? It's a whole lot easier for, for God to begin to speak to the person. That's what the Lord wants. The Lord wants to be able to speak with every one of you. When I made that comment, the wife said, to the husband very meekful quiet says I knew it I knew it so the Lord had already been dealing with me so I took the bottles I said are you ready to give this up they said yes I took the bottles and I took them over to the kitchen sink and I poured everything out of the kitchen sink started praying over the house I threw everything away and then we started giving God thanks well, lo and behold, the gentleman ended up getting a new contract. In that new contract, he ended up finding a, one of the, the fellow employees that was there that said, you know what, I'm thinking about starting my own business. And he asked them to start their own business together. They ended up creating this business of construction and they began to work on houses together and God prospered them. And we watched the Lord prosper all of them and their six, seven children. And I know for a fact it came from that day that we prayed. And we asked the Lord to get rid of that. The Feast of Unleavened Bread, what they would do is they'd run around the house and find those things that, that were yeast, preservatives, that represented sin, and they would pick up all of them. And the way they did it, they did it with such surety that if there was a little tiny grain of, like a grain of salt size of leaven, of bread, it would have to be picked up. If not, the whole place would be impure. We know of a story of a, of a man who who sinned against God and he stole when the Lord said, don't take it. And he took that, that item that he stole and he buried it under his tent and he tried to hide it. And then when the Israelites went to the next battle, they lost the next battle. And, 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 the, and the man of God said, Lord, what, what happened? How did we lose? 
He says, there's sin in the camp. So they went around and they began to say, who has sinned against God? And the man came and said, my master, we know that the Lord had said, don't take anything from the last battle, but I took a little bit and I hid it under my tent. And you know what the master had to do? The master had to take it, take the man, take the wife and all of the children and all of his possessions and they put them and they burned them and they got rid of all of them because they represented the disobedience of God people of God sometimes we disobey God so often it becomes commonplace sometimes it becomes so easy to disobey God that we need to go to God and say, God, forgive me for that area of disobedience. God wants to take us to a greater level, but he doesn't want you to take along with you your baggage, those things that hurt you, those things that are weighing you down. He doesn't want you to go with it. Why? Because he wants to take you to a promised land that's flowing with milk and honey, that has all the provisions. And if you take this impurity with you, then all of those provisions will empower the impurity God doesn't want that to happen so we have to recognize a feast of unliving bread is a feast that we celebrate of being un being pure that we're forgiven the second feast is a feast of weeks this is also known today as Pentecost the baptism of the Holy Spirit Pentecost the the day of Pentecost when the baptism came on the on the on those that were in the upper room it came on the feast of weeks it was a time of a refreshing and a building back up then there was a feast of tabernacles the feast of tabernacles is the meeting place with God everybody say I must meet with God we need to know how to be able to go to God and start meeting with God in Deuteronomy 8 18 it says and you shall remember the Lord your God We have to always remember God. Why? Because it is He that gives you the power to get wealth, to make wealth. He gives you the ability to prosper. Why am I talking along these lines? Because God's going to bless you in 2022 like never before. I want you to be prepared. I want you to be faithful. I want you to be committed. Pick a thing. Put the blessings of God in that thing. And watch how God's going to bless that thing that you're doing. God's going to bless it. He says he gives you power to get wealth. He doesn't give you power to get wealth because you're all that. He gives you the power to get wealth because he he may establish his covenant. God has a covenant. God has an agreement that he's trying to establish with our forefathers. The agreement is that we will be blessed as being children of Abraham, being the child of God, accepting Christ as our, as our Lord and Savior. We shall be blessed. God is trying to establish his covenant, his covenant of being able to bless you. Everybody put your hand on your belly, if you will, and say, Father, I receive your blessings right now in Jesus' name. Come on, say it. Father, I receive your blessings right now. I mean, if I could just say, the Lord showed me the blessings that are coming on many of you this year blessings to where you're going to wake up in december 31st and look back and say oh my god you are so gracious if you do according to the word of god if you do according to the directive that we're doing the bible says listen to his prophets listens to god's prophets and so shall your way prosper You listen to when God brings a man in your life to be able to speak the word over your life and follow after these principles because this year you're going to get some of the greatest word that you ever heard that if you apply everything that is spoken from this pulpit, I promise you, you're going to see the blessings of God like never before, like never before. So in in James chapter four, verse seven, watch what it says. Therefore, submit to God. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. We have to learn to to submit ourselves before God. He tells us in Jeremiah 29, 13. And if you shall seek me and find me when you search for me with your whole heart. We have to submit ourselves to God by seeking God, by searching for him with our whole heart. Not partial, not temporal. I got news for everybody and I have been rebuked for the past two years. 
I've been rebuked by many people in the past two years by this statement that I'm going to say. I've been rebuked. But God keeps confirming that this word is true. Nobody wants to hear what I'm about to say because it sounds so bad, but there's good news. And I want to make sure that I say it properly so that way you understand this. For as long as we're on this planet, in this body, sickness, disease, poverty, discomfort, obstacles are always present for as long as you're in this body. Sickness, disease, poverty, discomfort all of that is always present but through the blood of Jesus healing deliverance prosperity sanctification is mine always so there's a fight of obvious sicknesses that are being talked about highly today and it's built a fear in many. If we submit to God and seek his face, we should not fear that even if it comes, God shall see us through it. No matter what the obstacle, no matter what the poverty, no matter what the discomfort, I have great news for you. Jesus is your savior. Jesus is your savior. We have to submit to God. We have to resist the devil. We have to submit to God. We have to resist the devil. We have to submit to God. We have to resist the devil. The devil always tries to drive us. The devil always tries to guide us. The devil always tries to manipulate us. The devil always tries to stop us. But if we submit to God and if we resist him, he'll flee from us. He'll flee from us. The devil will flee from you. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. In the same breath, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Why is it in the same passage of scripture, it says those two things? Because for as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest. For as long as we're in this body, the enemy's going to come. But we need to resist him and submit to God. We need to surrender to him and say, you know what? Lord, I don't care what the devil throws my way. You are my God. I'm going to hold my head up. I'm not going to hide myself. I'm going to keep pressing forward. And I will not quit the work of what God has for me. I will not quit it. I will not quit it. I will not quit it. It has to be in our mouths. I will succeed. I will grow. I will prosper. I will be successful. No sickness and disease can come my way. There is nothing that can stop me from prospering. There's nothing that can stop me from being healed. People of God, God wants to prosper us, but sometimes fear paralyzes us. They're saying even now that this COVID is going to be with us forever. It's going to be an annual season. They've been saying this for two years. They fought it back and forth. I don't know about all that medical stuff. I don't know what's true when it comes to what they say because they've changed their mind over and over again. But the more I read in the word, the Bible says that by his stripes I am healed. Those words have never been changed. Glory to God. Why should I be afraid? Why should I fear? Because I'm resisting the devil. I'm fleeing from all of his transgressions and his attempts. I take away all impurities out of my house. If I find that I'm doing something wrong, I stop it right away. And, and wrong at my point is maybe a, a, a wrong confession or a statement that was not right. Or maybe I'm not doing what the Lord asked me to do. I have to be faithful to what God has. You have to be faithful to what God has for you because he has something great for you. Something dynamic that will surpass everybody's understanding. So you submit to God, you draw near to God, you cleanse your hands and you have to purify your heart. That's the whole purpose of these feasts. That's the whole purpose of the first fruit offering. 
That's the whole purpose of giving before God because you're actually saying, you know what? I could take this bonus. I could take this check. I could take this income and I could go out and I can add a room to my house or I could go buy me new clothes or I can save it for a vacation or I could go do something with it. But instead, you're going to say, you know what, God, I'm going to put you first. And I'm going to bring it to the church and I'm going to put you first. Somebody says, how can how can churches talk like this? How could they not? How could they not? The enemy tries to convince the people that the churches have enough money. The enemy comes and tries to convince the people that there's greed and envy in, in the churches. The enemy comes and tries to convince the people that the church doesn't have a need or the church is okay. The enemy does that. You know why? Not because he's trying to stop the blessing of the church. He's trying to stop your blessing. Because can I say this to you? That when people leave, God provides in another force and another stream. God always will supply for his work regardless. Because this is his work. The Bible says, at least the Lord build the house, the labor's labor in vain. I remember a day back in the, uh, in the early 2000s, I'm pastoring a church and one of our greatest, our largest tithers who actually started off as one of the poorest members in the church. He was an alcoholic and he had a liquor store in Raymondville that was going bankrupt when he started in the ministry. He was poor as poor could be. But God prospered him using the principles that, that we were teaching. God prospered him to where his wife ended up becoming on Entrepreneur Magazine, Success Magazine, all over the United States of America. Front cover, first Hispanic woman ever to grace the front cover of CEO and Entrepreneur and Success Magazine came from Harlingen, Texas. God took them from sheer poverty to an incredible prosperity by following after these. She had passed away and he was still alive and, and he was up in age and, and he began to be uh, taunted by the devil about how all the church wanted was his tithe. His tithe check was in the, in the sum every time he tithed in the sum of at least $30,000 personal income. Thousands and thousands of dollars. And I noticed that he was having a, a, a challenge and he was fighting something in the, in the ministry. You'd see it on his face, you'd see it in his action. Something was going on, here he was, a widower, and I knew he was hurting. I went to go see him and I said, I said, sir, I said, what seems to be the problem? Are you okay? I'm, I'm in his office, very friendly, makes me a cup of coffee, we sit down. I said, is everything okay? And he began to say, the only thing you all want in the church is my money. Made that statement. And I looked at him and I said, I said to myself, I said, I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, how do I reach this man? Because he had no idea. I said, you have a problem with the tithes and offerings? Yeah, I have a problem with it. All you want is my money. I said, why do you say that? He says, well, you know how big the checks are. I looked at him. And I said, sir, there's this great church right down the road. And they need new air conditioning. If you think we're after your money, then I don't think there's anything that I can do for you. God needs to speak to you. I said, why don't you go, why don't you go join another church? Why don't you go start working and helping another ministry out? We'll be okay. Because you're not our provider. God is our provider. But I'm more interested in your soul. And so if you think that we're after your money, then I think it's probably best for you to move on. He looked at me and says, you're kicking me out. I said, I'm not, you are. I said, you need to go serve another church. There's other places you can go, be a blessing to other works. If you think we're after your money, you think I'm after your money. <laughs> now the average person would say, the average pastor would hear something like that. And sometimes they'd say, you're gonna, you're telling that person the, the largest tither in your ministry to go to another church? Sure, because I'm after the soul, not after the pocketbook. He went to another church. And our tithes and offerings to the ministry went up. It increased. 
beyond measure. I said, look at this. I told my wife, I said, look at this. Only God can do things like this. God always provides for his church. The reason why you're to give is because God has a blessing for you. He wants to establish his covenant of you receiving your blessing. So he gives you a ground that is fertile for you to sow your seed, to bring your tithes and offerings, for you to be able to give your first fruits to. It's a fertile ground, a ground that will utilize that to win souls, to touch lives, to make a difference to the community. That's what this church is here for. This is your ground. When I was a, when I was a young man in the ministry, uh, even before in the ministry, the, the Lord showed me, it's like, he told me, he says, I have a box that whatever you put in there, I multiply it and render it back to you. Whatever you put in this box, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure that whatever you put in this box, it's like this dynamo machine that if you put it inside this box, it's gonna multiply and it's gonna come right back to you. I said, what is this box? He says, it's a church. You put it inside the church, whatever you put inside the church, the Bible says give and it shall be given back. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It says give and it shall be given back. But it just gives and given back. It's given back good measure. It's given back pressed down, shaken together and running over. Oh my God. How many of y'all would like to have a box in your living room that whatever you put in there is gonna come back multiplied for? How many of y'all would like that? Come on now, don't lie to me, raise your hand. You want to see a nice little box in your living room that whatever you put in it, it's going to come back to you. Good measure, press down, shaking together, running over. You have that box and it resides right here. It resides right here. And God's already doing it. Listen to this, John 7, 37, 39. Watch what it says. On the last day, that great day of the feast, this is Jesus on the last day of the feast. Jesus stood and cried out saying, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. See, he's already saying, this is the box. This is the multiplier. This is the place where you get multiplication. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. When we go to Jesus and we deposit into him, when we run to Jesus, it comes back. It flows right out of us. A stream that makes things alive. When I understood this, when I got the revelation of it, I said, Father, I want to put everything in this box. I want to put everything in your ministry. I want to do whatever I can. I'll build businesses. I'll build whatever. I wasn't prosperous. I, was, I wasn't poor. About 13,000 a year income. A wife and one child. Bills paid. Tithes paid. Offerings given. Car paid for. House taken care of. 13,000 a year. I wasn't thinking about the amount. I just said, Lord, the church needs more. How can I get more into the church? Not so I can receive, but that I can seek you first. And the Lord began to give me plans and strategies and insights and understanding that to this day, I cannot stop. I cannot stop. Why? Not because the church has great needs, but because there's a big devil out there. And I'm going to resist him. And I'm going to make sure that he flees. Now I enjoy resisting the devil off of your life. I want to see the devil flee off of your family. I want to see the devil leave your home. I don't want him to touch anything that has anything to do with you. Why? Because you're a disciple taught by God and great is your peace and undisturbed composure. God wants to do something great inside you. Matthew chapter 6, 21, last scripture. For where your treasure is. There your heart will be also. Where is that treasure? What is that treasure that you have? Where is your heart? These past couple of weeks, we've been, we've been working around the, around the building. And really, all last year the same, but it's like the Lord has multiplied it. I can't wait to show you how the bathrooms are coming out. I put a little video, even though it shows some construction, on, at the Center Church Facebook page. If you go on there, you can see the, fit, the video and you can see the update. And God's provided, God's provided for the bathroom that we can refresh it, brand new floors, wonderful walls, fantastic countertop, beautiful sink, 
nicely bright and lit. A bathroom to the average Joe may not mean much, but to me it means the world and to the visitors that come in, they'll no longer see the stains on the floor. They'll never, no longer smell the poor flushing toilets. They'll never, no longer be concerned of whether uh, the toilet's gonna get stopped up or not. That's a big deal, especially when you have a full house, which we will have. We had a water baptism that you go inside the baptistry and even in the middle of summer, it'd still be cold. But the Lord provided this past week a brand new water pump and a brand new heater and reconditioned the whole water baptism so we can have water baptism at will. We're going to have special water baptism services. When the Lord gave us the word at the beginning of the year, refresh, refresh, refresh. It's exactly what's happening. It's being refreshed. So we have the new baptistry hallelujah now the new men's restroom should be done in the next couple of days and then we skip over to the woman's and we're going to keep going and then this past week the general contractor anointed man of god came to be with me from san antonio we went we looked at what we're going to do in the front they're putting everything together he brought an architect he brought a designer he even brought his business partner and says we need to figure out how to get this done for pastor ortiz what is it going to take and we already began looking at what is it going to take to open up the front entryway and have the have the center right there in the front where we can have holy ground cafe and a recreational center that will be opened up every day so you can come you can have a cup of coffee you can have a business meeting you can relax you can come over here worship god you can read your scriptures in the middle of the day how many of y'all would like that give god praise give god praise that's what's coming it's going to be full state of the art. We're going to do it in the front entrance in the sanctuary and also in the front entrance of the offices. And then it's going to expand to a complete cafe. We want to make sure that if people have any kind of need, they're hungry, we got food for you. You need a place to have a business meeting, why don't you come over here versus Starbucks? There's nothing worse than going to Starbucks, trying to minister to somebody, and the guy on the table next to you is talking about some indecent act that they just did. Here you'll have a holy place, a holy ground where you can come over here and you can hear the voices of God. You can spend time with your family and be proud of what God is doing in our lives. Amen. The Lord is putting all this together. And people say, how are you going to fund it? From the kingdom. From the kingdom. From you. Because God's going to bless you. How many of y'all believe God's going to bless you? Lift your hand up high. Let's pray right now. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, I thank you for the blessings that are coming. I thank you for every anointing that shall fall upon their life. I thank you that you open up your windows of heaven and you pour out the blessings like they've never seen it before. Father, I declare that their one, every one dollar of value that they have will render back to them a hundred times. Father, you continue to bring it back to them that they shall never suffer, they shall never lack. Nothing in their hands will ever break, that the cars will last a long time, that the clothes will not wither, that their businesses continue to prosper and you continue to bring in to their house in Jesus' name. Father, we give you praise for this right now in Jesus' precious name. Everybody said, amen. Come on, give the Lord a loud praise offering for that. <coughs> Oh, Jesus is Lord. You know, this past week, um, I went to, I did a TV show. It was uh, two weeks ago, a week and a half ago. I went to do a TV show trying to figure out what it takes to test, to do testing. And I said, okay, Lord, if this is what you're saying we're going to be doing, okay, let's just go do it. So I went around and videotaped and I saw all these test places that shut down because they ran out. I said, Lord, we need help with this. And this gentleman back there who came, who's been coming to the church since uh, the latter part of last year and now has become part of the ministry. He's actually helping out, volunteering in many areas, helping us with Holy Ground Cafe and, and, uh, and doing other items. He came to me in, uh, a few months ago and he said, Pastor, look what the Lord put me in the middle of. It had to do with all these testings. And he didn't know that I was out there filming all these places that had shut down and that there's a huge need for it. And then I went ahead and went to him and I said, hey, is there anything you could do here on the property? He says, I was thinking if it's possible. And I said, yeah. So he went ahead and made contact to the company and he has all these tests by the thousands. 
that are going to be made available, 200 plus a day. And so we're going to have a, a section of the parking lot over on the far side by the hotels. So it looks neutral. Nobody thinks that they're coming to the church, but they're going over to the parking lot over there on the other side of the parking lot for testings. And anybody who needs testing is going to be there. But here's the difference between our testing and the other testings. He's going to be believing God and praying that people are going to receive their healing. And we're going to do this as a ministry. Can you all handle this? Free testings for people and do it as a ministry. And we're going to have a man of God laying hands on every one of those tests. That even if they do come in positive, we're going to believe that they come away negative. In Jesus' name. Amen. And God's going to continue to bless. Everybody stand to your feet. Let's pray. I'm going to pray that God bless you throughout the week. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, I ask you to bless Bless Center Church. Bless every single person within the sound of my voice. Touch their life this week. Father, allow them to see your hand at work. Let your word come alive inside their life. And Lord, we just give you praise right now. That as they begin to see your blessings touch their life, I ask you right now in Jesus' name, that you show them how they can testify. And how they can declare your works. And that they can go out and share your testimonies of what you're doing for them. Father, we give you praise for this right now in Jesus' precious name. And everybody said, if you want to ask Christ to come inside your life, pray this prayer right now. Say it right now. Say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Wash them all away. Come live inside me. I accept you as my Lord and I accept you as my Savior. Baptize me with your Holy Spirit and fire. I accept you, Jesus, as my Lord and as my Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Come on, everybody. Give the Lord a praise offering.